Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 66. Welcome. It is so good to be back. How are you today, friends? I have got my cup of tea on this windy day here in Southern California in, oh, the, on the last day of February. Um, we are having some warm, high winds again, which as I've talked about in previous episodes, I find so distracting listening to that wind. But I'm drinking some Harney and Sons Earl Grey, which is one of my favorites because it reminds me of Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek Next Generation. <laughs> where he would go to the replicator and say, Earl Grey, hot. So I'm drinking that. I've been enjoying it as a London fog a lot lately, but it's the morning and I'm still fasting. Um, So I won't be doing that. But maybe this afternoon, because my daughter Chloe and I are going to have what we call coffee house time, which is not, in fact, going to coffee houses anymore, but trying to replicate the coffee house experience in the living room with some ambient music like from Spotify, a coffee house playlist. Um, I'll make either something like a London Fog or a chai or a latte. And um, we will just sit there in companionable silence and work on our own projects. <laughs> but it's just somehow fun to do it in this uh, very intentional way, which is what we used to do when we'd go to coffee houses. And um, when my son was in travel soccer, he had he was on a team that was the the practices were about 35 minutes away and i thought i was going to hate driving him to that he was in middle school but it turned out to be this great 2 hours of time that i could do whatever i wanted with so I'd go for a walk and then there was a coffee house there and i would settle in and just you know i was blogging more then and i would knock out blog posts and my my daughter came with me she was a junior in high school right I guess because I remember her working on her college essays and her saying oh my gosh I what is it about being in a place like this I was so productive and it's true it's like being out of your house where there's nothing I mean if you can stay off social media then there's nothing to distract you which reminds me I'm gonna already uh, two minutes in go on a tangent I saw this YouTube video Uh, maybe I'll link to it what is the name of that channel? Like, it's like Minimal Mom or Minimalist Mom or something like that. It's a minimalist channel, obviously. <laughs> um, but she chatted about uh, a concept she had heard of called the silent to-do list. And one of the, the arguments for, for being a minimalist, for decluttering your environment, is that when you are in your home and you look around, every like material object that you have carries a message with with it it is telling you something so the the um you know the the sink full of dishes is saying why can't you keep up on the housekeeping why why is there a, why are you so messy the um you know the the couch or whatever is is saying you know I'm worn. I need to be clean. This was a bad decision. This doesn't go with the paint. The paint's saying I need to be, you know, like, and and I certainly know that as as soon as I get into really cleaning, it's like it's never ending. I'm like, oh well, if I clean that, then all of a sudden that looks dirty, or or I'm I was like wash, washing down walls the other day and just thinking, oh, these baseboards need to be painted. This whole room needs to be painted. Um, we really need to clean the carpet. I mean, it's just everything is just. It, it just there is a weight that and a message that comes with all your possessions, which is why going to a hotel is so calming. Um, people who you know they they can say, oh well, you can just you know have a staycation, um, and you know just and not spend the money on the hotel. But there's something about getting out of your envir- environment where none of those material objects carry any weight for you that allows your mind to rest and relax. Um, and I thought that was kind of a cool cool idea and anyways so i think that's kind of what it is with the coffee house you get out of your environment um there's nobody um, asking you for things there's no laundry to transfer there's no you know like you are in this little bubble um and 
a lot, which allows you to focus. So we are at this point during COVID <laughs> trying to recreate that feeling, um, which is kind of fun on a Sunday afternoon, which I'm like, I'm not going to be doing any cleaning or anything like that at that point anyways. I don't even have to make dinner on Sunday nights. Chloe does that. So it is a very free day. Anyways, that was all about my cup of tea. <laughs> Still loving the Harney and Sons. Um, and I hope you are too. I've heard back from a lot of you that, that tend to enjoy that tea as well. So what's the weather like where you are? I am so sorry if you were in that whole huge snowpocalypse, crazy stuff in Texas. Um, it made me feel guilty because we were having hot, dry weather while everyone else was being frozen out. It was so weird. But the weather we're having right now is just, it's reminding me that spring is coming, which kind of reminds me, this this um, podcast um, has been going on for three years now. I started in February. I, I forgot to sort of mark the three-year anniversary a couple episodes ago. And I do remember my 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 first, you know, I don't know, half a dozen episodes. It was a lot about gardening and knitting, which were really where my, my creative energies were going at that point. But I'm, I'm getting to that point now. I'm looking at the backyard, which really, I mean, needs to be weeded. It's a little bit out of control. Things need to be cut back. Um, but I'm kind of making plans for the the incremental changes, you know, the, that I want to make this year. Every year I kind of try to improve something. I'm not sure what I improved last year. I don't think anything. Um, but part of what I want to do, I'm just going to talk about it now, is um, I live in Southern California. So we have patios. We have patio covers. So part of our, our patio is covered um, with an like an open, it's, it's called a patio cover, but it's not solid on top. And, um, and I've got kind of like a nice, what I would call kind of a living room arrangement over there, a furniture, like uh, the table's low, like a coffee table. That's where I've got my swing chair, which I got about three years ago. Love that so much. But over in another section of our patio, we have a big patio. The, the previous owners poured it. I would not have poured so much patio. Um, but that's where we have what I would call more like the dining, outdoor dining table, which we use a lot in the spring and summer, like every meal. Um, every dinner almost we will eat outside but um, what what used to be there when we moved in actually was a hot tub which were all the rage in 1987 when this house was built but we got rid of that long ago it never worked Um, but right as you're sitting at that table to the side of it is just a concrete block wall that goes to the you know that separates us from the neighbor's house and um, the patio goes right up to it, so there's you can't really plant anything there. To, a little bit um, to the right of that, next to the lawn, is where we have the garden, and we have blackberry bushes climbing up. And anywhere where we've got concrete walls here, concrete block walls, I try to cover with vines because I do not like to see those. And so we pretty much are like green almost everywhere, except for over here on the patio. And um, so I have a birthday coming up, and, and um, what I think I'm going to ask for are large raised bed planters like that are maybe 16 inches deep and two feet high I'm missing a dimension you know I don't know how tall um but pretty good tall like maybe 18 inches or something and um I want two of them that I can place against that that block wall and I'll put a trellis on them and then cover all that with vines um, maybe even like a lemon tree and like a whiskey barrel over there. So just to cover that up so that, that, um, I don't have to look at that, that block wall. <laughs> so, um, that's my, my big improvement for this year. We will see if that happens. Um, those planters are kind of expensive. I found on Pinterest plans for very nice ones, but you know, building things with wood is not really my thing, but who knows? Who knows? I I might try it or my husband and I can do it together. We're not good at those kinds of things, but uh, so yeah. So, and then there's another wall of our, um, where there's a planter that I would like to rip out what's there and redo that this year. So I've been kind of having fun thinking about that. Um, I've always wanted a fire pit, but the only place that we have that would work that seems like the right place for a fire pit is under our (laughs) our patio cover and that is not a safe place for a fire pit so I'm thinking oh you know now that um 
our kids are bigger. We used to keep a pig, you know, is you know, Southern California big, but grass area to play catch and things like that. We had a big swing set at one point. Um, we don't need that much grass anymore. I'm like, maybe we could carve some of that out and do some seating in a fire pit. That'll probably be next year. It's a little ambitious for this year. But um, yeah, so I'm just, are you being inspired by, are you thinking about spring and getting that itch? Um, and all of that is just like, you know, things outside of my normal let's replant some things and figure out what I'm going to plant in the garden which will be thoughts for another day so anyway so that's what's going on here we're also thinking about um, looking towards summer um, my two older kids will likely be moving out in June for sure my son who has an internship in San Diego which will be kind of a hybrid partially online partially in person um, so he and it's luckily in San Diego which is where he also goes to school so um, I know he's very excited <laughs> about getting out um, he's 21 years old getting out from his parents house so both of them are so hopefully uh, if all things go well like they could possibly live together which just is bringing up all kinds of things about you know furnishing apartments stuff like that so there's there's lots of stuff to think about but um, if that happens in June you know what that means I get my sewing space back yeah so maybe that will inspire me to do some more quilting which I've been in a bit of a funk on mach making machine quilts you know, machine, you know I'm doing the hand piece quilt along which we'll talk about but um, it's just a little bit of a bummer to get that um, that sewing machine out although I did it a ton at the beginning of the pandemic so anyway so that's kind of um, yeah it, it, just fun to think about my youngest son starting to hear back from colleges so definitely there's we're looking towards summer and fall and um, life being a little bit different than it is right now in a really good way before we move on to the quilting segment i'd like to thank the fat quarter shop for being a sponsor of the podcast fat quarter shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world they stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Join the Fat Quarter Shop for their 14th annual Designer Mystery Block of the Month Club. This quilt will leave you with a sugar rush with 12 sampler blocks by designers from Moda Fabrics to sweeten the deal. Each quilt block finishes at 12 inches square and features the strawberries and rhubarb fabric collection by Fig Tree Quilts from Moda Fabrics. This club is perfect for beginners and experienced quilters. It runs from June 2021 to May 2022 and ships around the 10th of every month. I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can get more information. All right, let's talk some quilting. What are you guys working on? I am about 18 inches from the end of the seam that'll be the finish, that I will be finished with my hand piece quilt along throw sized quilt. I've talked about before, I got a little sidelined with my sprained wrist from finishing that quilt before we started the quilt along. I had um, a wall size quilt done. I actually had three of those, three of those blocks. Um, of the wall size and you put four of them together to make the throw size quilt and I just got a little sidelined on that last block but it's almost together I will finish it today give it a good press and maybe take a photograph but it, we're having these winds so it might not be the best day to do that but that is very exciting I'm also sewing along with the group for the handpiece quilt along um, the patterns called harmony and um, so we will be releasing the the tips and tricks for the the second unit um, tomorrow on March 1st and so I'm sort of quilting you know sewing along there and it's been so fun as it always is in the handpiece quilts along Facebook group to watch Every, how everyone else is posting their what they're making and I am just every year blown away by the cool color choices and fabric choices that people make um, it's truly inspiring because I can certainly get in a rut I'm not very brave in my color selections I'll be honest with you and so it is so fun to see people who are brave <laughs> It's just very, very inspiring. It is absolutely not too late to join us if you are thinking about that. Um, these units are, they don't take, you know, we're, we're taking it very slowly. These units don't take long to sew, especially if you're just starting with um, this, uh, what is it, 28-inch um, 
wall size version, which if you enjoy doing that, then you could just go ahead afterwards and, and make three more, which is how I did it. I didn't sew them all at once because as Patty and I were testing the pattern, um, as we made tweaks, I wanted to revisit the pattern, you know, and the cutting instructions and all the testing that we did uh, block after block. So um, they're, you know, just, just start with one, just start with one. It's uh, and it's really, it's a great thing to do um, to really calm, to calm your mind. And if you're thinking, I absolutely have no interest in ever hand sewing an entire quilt, that's fine too. This is a super cool pattern. It's got a secondary pattern. I'll be honest with you, Patty is responsible for the majority of the design on it. The, you know, we may have tweaked it together, but the concept was hers and I love it. And it would be such a breeze to machine sew. So absolutely um, take a look at it and see if you'd, you'd be interested in machine. And I would love to see some examples of people machine sewing it as well. That would be so fun. And now that I'm getting kind of caught up on things, um, I do have a quilt that I still need to bind that's been sitting there for quite a long time. I'm trying to, I can't remember what it's called. Is it serendipity maybe? I can't remember. I'll throw a picture in the show notes if you're interested, but I just, um, yeah, I've got no plans for that quilt, but it's been sitting there ready to bind for like six months now. So that'll be fun to, to uh, you know, check that other um, quilt off my list. And I don't know, maybe that's one that I'll send with my, with my son when he moves to his apartment. Um, meanwhile, I've been also, um, well, okay, yesterday I did get the sewing machine out. I did cut all of the old ties off all the masks that nobody wants to use and I sewed on those new ones. Um, I'll put another link in the show notes because I've, you know, through Amazon, I can tell people are buying them um, who have been listening and I, it's, I love them so much. There's a, they're the soft um, ear loops that already come with an adjuster on it. And I've just taken every mask now that we own and put these new ear loops on them and now they work. <laughs> They weren't other they just were not working before so um i i got the package that is half white and half black which i thought would be good but really i've i've used up almost all the white ones and then only a few of the black ones so i could use some more white ones but um so that's my, been the only reason i've gotten the sewing machine out for a while is masks and um but i'm thinking about um sewing a linen tank top oh i talked last week about um, wanting to sew napkins, which I haven't done, but several people sent me tutorials to do to to sewing napkins with doing the mitered corners. There's so many different ways to do this, um, so I'm checking those out, and I will be making some. Um, so thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate that. So now, if I could put the hive mind together, um, I I want to make a linen tank top. I've been following this Instagram account called Not So Perfect Linen, or not. What is it called? Like maybe that. I'll put a link. Not per I think it's just not perfect linen, and they have the most beautiful linen clothes. And this woman had just was wearing a tank top that you know you could just wear in the summer by itself or as a layer, um, you know, with other times of year the year. And I'm just like, I want one of those. And you know, when you know, you can look online and they are anywhere from you know sixty to one hundred and twenty dollars. I'm like, I have linen. This seems very simple. I have a feeling that the one there that they sell is a little, finished a little nicer than the ones I've, I've been seeing. So I want them to search for a, a good pattern. Um, so many of them I didn't like. Um, some of them have, I like, like they have maybe a V-neck in the front, but they also have the V-neck in the back, which I suppose I could just not do that. Um, the, the free pattern that I did find from, I don't know, I think it's like fabric.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, I, I like the shape of it, except for the, the neckline in the front is a little high. And I did see in the comments of it that some people lowered it a little bit. I'm not sure. I probably would be better off looking for one that had a V-neck in the front and then correct in the back where my hair would cover a, a not perfect neckline. But um, so if you have any, any um, you know, experience with this or you have any patterns you'd like to throw my way, that's, I just want a simple V-neck that's loose fitting or super uh, a simple tank top that's loose fitting that you could leave untucked or just maybe do a front tuck in it. Um, you know, I think it's basically only two pieces. <laughs> you know, it can either be the front and the back or left side and right side with a seam down the middle. Um, and then the one that I picked then uses bias around the um, to 
to uh, cover the raw edges of the neck and the armholes instead of turning it under and then you just turn under the hem so anyway so that I think I don't know that's what I'm thinking about doing I'm just have this this urge to to make a linen tank top and since I'm not doing a lot of normal quilting right now besides the hand piecing I would love it if you guys would share in the simple handmade everyday Facebook group what you're working on um, let's get some quilt inspiration going there so that I can get out of my mo my lack of mojo but I just love seeing what you guys are working on I know you guys enjoy seeing what other people are working on so so please think about doing that um, in terms of knitting, you know, the hand piecing has sort of taken up my my handwork time. But one day I was just not feeling it on the hand sewing and got out my needles, found a cute um, dishcloth uh, pattern, which I, again, I'll put a link in the show notes, and cast on some stitches, did one row of of. Uh, stitch of knitting and realized I cannot do this my wrist is still even though my wrist is healed enough to hand sew not um, enough to to knit which is sad which is kind of weird but um, I will be uh, anxious to kind of get back to that because all of our hand knit dishcloths which are years old um, they are they're showing their age they're starting to fall apart you know if one little thing if it, if it gets uh, somebody uses it to clean a knife and it severs one of those um, threads then boom that thing's going to unravel so I want to get kind of want to get back to that so I think I talked last episode about the fact that I've been kind of trying to dig into um, homemaking natural living kind of revisit my roots on that so I reread the book uh, down to earth which I have enjoyed I finished that now and it just really just talks about investing in your home you know with your basic blood, sweat, and tears, live beneath your means, do stuff for yourself, um, make your own food, <laughs> things like that, things I'm, I'm already doing, but it's always inspiring to, you know, try to take things to the next level. So that's been kind of fun. Um, and in that same vein, I've talked about how I'm sort of I've dug into fermenting foods. I'm still stewing my the kombucha I love love brewing kombucha uh, we're now on a pretty regular basis uh, making our own sauerkraut which my husband really loves and I tolerate because I know it's good for me um, but that's been kind of fun and, and so I need to figure out what's the next step probably sourdough bread but um, given my blood sugar issues I really try to not eat too much bread sourdough is the way to go if you want to eat breads I'm like whole grain sourdough so that might be on the list um, I also dug out my healthy bread in five minutes a day cookbook um, so that you, you kind of mix up um, a batch of dough that you, that you do not have to knead and you leave it in the refrigerator for up to two weeks and you just grab a handful anytime you want to make a little loaf of bread so I've been thinking about doing that again but I don't really have the proper equipment they really want you to like have a pizza stone and I used to have those back in the 90s and every one I ever had cracked so but but um, cooking the bread on the pizza stone draws some of the the uh, liquid out of it it's kind of a wet dough and that gives you the better crust so I'm just like I don't know do I want to again I'm trying to sort of uh, purge and, and be a little bit more minimal so I'm not really sure that I want to invest in a pizza stone and a pizza peel and you know those kind of things that that make that really work especially if I'm not going to keep up with it so um, but the the other book that I've been trying to get from the library that's from the 90s is called Nourishing Traditions. And um, back in the day, I used to look at it like at the bookstore and thought, ah, oh, this lady's a little crazy. But now, now I'm kind of all about the traditional foods movement. And what's funny is um, I thought, okay, well, I can be, this book is really old. I will be able to find a really inexpensive used copy on Amazon. And actually, I really couldn't find one that was a decent shape that was cheap so I'm like okay I'm just gonna get it from the library first to make sure that it's something I want it's very hard to find at my libraries um, I'm on a, a, a list at, at my library locally for it but um, the library in the town one town over I'm like oh no they have it and that'll be fun I'll you know it's like a 20 minute drive it'll be a good excuse to get out of the house so I and they had it like you know had it had it I wasn't even ha on a list for it so um I request it I get the thing the next day I take this nice uh, drive after lunch kind of took a long lunch and drive out there and pick it up and the way they do pick up it's in a brown paper bag 
and at the curbside. And so I get it and I get home and I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is nourishing broth, like nourishing traditions. It, it's the same author, same style of cover, which I just did not know there were so many books by this author that all look the same. And apparently I am a skimmer when it comes to reading. So I get home and it's nourishing broth, which I already know how to make chicken broth. I already know how it's good for you. So I, I did, I did page through it just to glean something from it, but then went back in the house, requested the proper book. And um, a couple days later, I return that, pick up the book, get home, realize I now have the Nourishing Traditions Cookbook for Children. (laughs) I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? Can I not read? (laughs) So so I still have that. (laughs) <laughs> and then realized that this library, uh, one town owner does not, uh, one town over does not, in fact, have nourishing traditions. Um, so I'm just gonna have to wait till it's, um, it comes to my library. But man, how many times do I have to make that mistake? It was kind of funny. So, um, so I'm looking forward to looking through that. Um, the book that I'm reading that's sort of for um, just my light read, my fiction read before I go to bed is one of those prime reading books, which means it's just like free on prime and it's a whole series. This one's called Growing Season by Melanie and she's got a really weird last name like um, Lagashulte or something like that. I will put it in the show notes as always so you never have to jot anything down. Um, it's a series about uh, a woman in her 30s who is, she lives in Minneapolis, laid off from her um, kind of high-powered marketing job um, and doesn't know what to do with herself. And she gets the opportunity, um, her uncle who runs a hardware store in this rural town has a heart attack and they ask her to come and run the store for them while he recovers and she's laid off so she's got no reason not to go. So she goes and she rents this little farmhouse and I mean you can see where this is going. She is really, she's discovering the simple life and um, since it is a whole series I'm I'm assuming that we just kind of get to, to her establishing that she really likes this way of life. She's kind of struggling with it right now um and uh, and so we'll see where it goes it's just it's a very light read it's um it's just kind of like the perfect thing to make me sleepy enough to go to sleep at night so that's been fun i'm actually also tackling don quixote so for years since we homeschooled um I bought this book called The Well-Educated Mind, which is a, a book that's kind of all about, it was, it was the same kind of curriculum I was using for the kids, but this was for adults who wanted to go back and kind of get a classical education. So um, she has a reading list of books and she has this way of, you know, it's the write with a pencil in your hand, mark up your book, take notes, um, and you, you know, kind of review your notes and kind of dig into these, these books. And so the first one is Don Quixote. And I've tried this a few times unsuccessfully, but I'm going to do it again because I I want to um, read, I want to get my brain back into the place where it can read um, thoughtfully and focused and for longer periods of time, which I think that we lose when we skim the news and do social media, that it's hard to to do serious reading. So so that's my other project that I do in the mornings. I spend about 20 or 30 minutes um, in my in my Don Quixote book and then there's all kinds of great books on this list that I've always wanted to read Anna Karenina um, and and some that I have and I may reread with this methodology like I don't know Pride and Prejudice Crime and Punishment um, yes and just others so so that's my my other book Um, the other book I just wanted to tell you about that I'm really enjoying it though it's not like a book you read is the Next Right Thing Journal. I've talked about the Next Right Thing podcast before, um, Emily P. Freeman. Um, I do enjoy her her podcast a lot. I, I kind of uh, go in and out of it. She's got, she's very earnest. Um, she's got several books and I have mixed feelings about them. I like them for a while, but again, she's, she's like kind of, she's a lot. <laughs> as my daughter would say. <laughs> she's just, she's really earnest um, in a good way, but sometimes I'm just like, enough. <laughs> but anyways, um, she created a, a like a guided journal that I, I pre-ordered and I got in January and I've been using it and I really like it. I should have brought it up here and to talk about it, but it's a journal that you can um, dive into basically weekly and monthly. So it's not something that you're writing your stuff down every day, but it helps you dig into on a weekly basis. It's um, She has these sections called These Are the Days where you just kind of jot down at the end of the week. I try to do this on Sundays, just a few things that have happened that week just so that when you go back 
you know, they're like the little things that you're, you would forget, you know, so that's been kind of nice. And then on a monthly basis, she's talking about what's giving you life, what is draining you, what are some questions that you have, um, what are some questions that you had last month that are, you know, you've got answers to this month. So it's kind of a different kind of journal, um, but I've really, I've really enjoyed it. In terms of um, fun things to watch, I don't have a lot to report this um, this time. I don't think I talked about this show though um, that's called The Dig. Um, it's a movie actually called The Dig and it's got Lily James in it, who you might know from, she was uh, Rose from Downton Abbey, she played Cinderella, and more recently she was in the that, um, what's it called, the Guernsey Literary Book and uh, Potato Peel Pie Society. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's in that, and it's um, and so is Carrie uh, Carrie Mulligan, who I really like. So it is based on a true story um, that where this woman and her husband they buy this property in England, and um, I think it's called like Sutton Woo or something like that. And there are these large mounds on their property, and they don't know what what they are, but they want to dig and find out. So. By the time we get to the story, this woman is a widow, but she's going to deal with this. So she hires a, an like an archaeologist, and she's going to find out. And um, and they do they find something, <laughs> they find something significant, and I will not tell you what that is. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's fun. I, I do my biggest issue with the whole. <laughs> show it's a very quiet movie like not a lot happens um it's kind of just like jumping into their their lives but if you liked if you ever watched the show the detectorists which i adore this is a little bit like that only they wish they found something as good as this um but lily james plays one of the, these characters where she's i think supposed to look a little nerdy or whatever but she wears these i think this is in about the 30s she wears the most inappropriate clothes for this time period like things where you can really like she's digging in a skirt and you can see right up her thigh or she'll have a top that shows her midriff i'm like yeah, this is when people are like wearing the most modest bathing costumes. There's no way this this girl is wearing like something where you can see her midriff. So that drove me crazy. But um, anyway, so that was really that was a fun movie. And um, we're actually my daughter and I are we've not finished our Gilmore Girls project yet, which has been going on for about six years, maybe longer. Um, but we started watching. Um, Star Trek Next Generation from the beginning. Now, this is a show that is like so unlike me that I would be into it, but is one of my all-time favorite shows. And it is funny when you go back and, and share a show that you really love with somebody, then like all the flaws. I'm like, oh, this is kind of corny or, you know, but but um, but that's been fun. She's been indulgent. So that's that, that's also been kind of good. But yeah, just, you know, we're, my husband and I are still working our way through Money Heist, um, you know, always popping in and out of uh, British mysteries on Acorn, Miss, Miss Fisher's Mysteries or Midsummer Murders or, you know, Foils War, things like that. So um, not a ton to to uh, talk about there. But how I wanted to end this podcast is last time we did a QA. and a I did not quite get through all the, the questions. So there are a couple more that I wanted to cover today. And so let's do that now. So the first question is basically, um, why did I get into podcasting and having a website and things like that? And yeah, I got to tell you, it was never the plan for sure. Back in 2005 or 2006, um, when we were homeschooling, that's when I discovered blogs. And I discovered them as a homeschool thing at first, like a resource. People were sharing things they were doing. And then I found out it was a whole thing, <laughs> which I was unaware of. And um, so I, I found blogs. And I, I've talked about this before, but I was enchanted. And I started every morning by, you know, making the rounds for my favorite blogs. And what I really loved about blogs are, were people sharing their everyday experience um, I guess maybe the, the highlights of their day, taking the time to take a photograph of their cup of tea and cookie and, and or their little um, organized corner with their cookbooks or their homeschool materials or whatever, and then just sharing it. I found it so inspiring. And um, then I discovered Soul Mama and Posy Gets Cozy, you know, this, those types of blogs and where people start, were making things. So this was, you know, like... 
I didn't know that people were sewing things and then sharing them on the internet. So and that's how I got into knitting um, was from Soul Mama. And um, oh, the other one, the other blog was called Beauty That Moves. That was another one that, oh man, I just loved. So these people are talking about um, sewing things, knitting things, uh, keeping a cozy home, kind of like routines, um, you know, just uh, fluffing up little corners of their home to, to make it work better, a little bit of um, gardening, things like that, just like all the things that I'm all about, right? Uh, that probably, <laughs> this probably formed me. So um, I just kind of thought, oh, I, I'm really enjoying this. So I started sewing a little bit. I should backtrack to say that um, my mom was a very accomplished seamstress. She made a lot of my clothes. She made my prom dresses. She made curtains. She did not quilt. Um, and, and she died when I was 24. So she died over 30 years ago, unfortunately, um, because we could be having so much fun right now. But um, so I was always raised around sewing was a very normal thing. Even when I had, you know, my first apartment, I sewed, you know, toaster covers and puffy valances and things like that. And um, when my kids were little, I, you know, sewed them little receiving blankets. Just so, you know, so I've always sewed, but never even considered making a quilt um, until Soul Mama um, had a, you know, it's probably one of those early collaboration things, had a 12 inch a stack of 12 inches squares from Anna Marie Horner Fabric, who also I didn't know who she was. And um, she talked about how she wasn't sure what to do with them until she just sewed them together into a large patchwork quilt. And I was like, oh, a quilt, that sounds like fun. And I seriously thought, it was it was on my bucket list. Like I transferred it on my like my major to-do list, make a quilt for years. Um, and I thought it would be like a one and done. I just want to try making a quilt one day. And um, so one day I did. <laughs> I was sewing other things. I started knitting scarves and, and making Halloween costumes and Harry Potter robes and things like that. Um, and then I was in the fabric store for something else when I saw my first charm pack, <laughs> a French general fabric. I bought one um, and then realized, oh, if I bought more of these, I could just sew them together. And that's what I did. I actually did buy a $12 pattern on how to make a patchwork quilt from Alicia Paulson of Posey Gets Cozy. And I had actually purchased that before, but you had to go to the fabric store and buy a, a bunch of different fabrics to make this patchwork quilt. And I was paralyzed by that fabric choice. But when I bought this charm pack, then it kind of click, click, click. Oh, someone else has put together all these things. They already go together. And, um, and that quilt I used it this morning is the absolute favorite quilt in this house. That first um, French general, it's, a, it's like a red and cream color patchwork quilt. And I've tried other patchwork quilts since then. Nothing has ever kind of come close to the magic of that. And it is so worn at this point. It is so soft. Um, I really need to probably rebind it and use bias binding instead of uh, straight cut binding because we are wearing through the binding on that quilt. So, um, so anyway, so that is how I made my first quilt. But in terms of the, the blog, um, at some point after all these years of reading these people who are taking the time to record the stuff they're doing with their children and in their house and their projects, I was like, I want to do that too. I wanted to be a contributor, not just a consumer of this. So I, my first blog was called They Grow Up Too Fast. And it was really, it was a mommy blog. It was just all about, I think the first, um, the first, and it's still on there, my my existing blog, I just converted the name. So all those old posts are, are still there. It was about blueberry picking. I think the second one was about the kids having a lemonade stand. And I did a lot of things about what I was cooking. And, and you know what? Oh, I look back on that time with such affection. There was no... <laughs> this is my gripe with everybody wants to make money from this now and I get it because I've kind of been down that road and decided that that is not for me um, but it was just sharing for the sake of sharing there was no agenda um, that I'm going to turn this into um, a course or you know a, a pattern that I could sell or anything like that it was just sharing and of course I wasn't working then so I had more time to do things like this and um, though the, that time with blogging is just so close to my heart so um, I had that blog that you know I, I bopped in and out of, uh, with, of you know in terms of posting regularity for years until Minky and I wrote the book uh, so illustrated and um, 
even then it was still, I think, still just called They Grow Up Too Fast. And um, But at some point, I switched it over to Simple Handmade Every Day and thought I was going to get a little bit more serious about blogging. And that's when I've done, you know, some of my tutorial posts on, you know, how to make a design wall and how to make flying geese and the, the tea cozy pattern and all those kinds of things that... Um, I love the, to get the feedback that people are using those those patterns, and, and I really thought that's where I was going to dig in and really be a blogger. But um, I eventually had to get you know almost a full time job, and there's less time for that now. But um, so now it seems to mostly be that blog is now about uh, show notes, and then when we're having the handpiece quilt along. But I miss just that general sharing of life, and and I think every once in a while, do you want to get back to that? Maybe you should get back to blogging like that. Let me know if that would be anything you'd be interested interested in in reading a lot of I guess what I would blog about is what I talk about on the podcast so maybe that's covered so that's how I stumbled into um, oh and then I guess podcasting haven't talked about that I was doing that for when I was kind of more seriously blogging my friend Francis you know Francis Dowell and I I'm from the off quilt off kilter quilt we are friends and one day she said to me you should have a podcast <laughs> And this is how it should go. You should talk about, because you are, you are really into quilting and you're knitting and you're into your shows and, and the books you're reading. And, and I love to hear you talk about um, homemaking things. And I think other people would too. And you should just have a podcast with those segments. And I was like, okay. And I just did it. And it, <laughs> and it worked out. I swear, it was not my idea. I never would have thought of it. So you could just completely credit Francis for setting me on this path. And I'm really glad that I did because these types of podcasts um, have really, there, there's almost none anymore. And they used to be very, uh, very common. I mean, there was like, I want to say dozens of them. And, um, and Frances is still posting. She just posted one that, you know, less frequently than she, she used to. And again, man, I used to listen to those, especially people like Frances, you know, back in 2010 was posting every week. And man, I would look forward to every single episode. And, um, because it's just so much fun to to find your tribe, right? To go, these are my people. These are the, you know, no, I don't have any friends that really want to talk about these things with me. <laughs> In real life, my friends in real life, you know, we are friends because we have kids the same age or whatever. And, and, um, but nobody really wants to dig into cleaning <laughs> or quilting or anything, um, like, like you guys do. So it, that is the one thing for all the bad things about the internet, helping people find their tribes has been such a blessing. And the last question is who inspired you to quilt? Did you learn from your mom or grandma? Again, um, I guess I kind of covered that before. I, my grandmother on my uh, on my dad's side was a um, a big quilter, and um, so we, I definitely have several. Is that true? Several. I I have one quilt from her for sure. It's a sunbonnet Sue that she started when I was born and gave to me when I was sixteen. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Um, and I don't have that on a bed right now. Ugh. Back in the days when I was in college, and um, I threw that in the back of my car to take to a laundromat and I closed it on part of that quote was on the latch and I I I put a hole in it and I've I now I would probably know how to fix that but I just have never wanted to wash that quilt very much because I didn't want it to fray I've got several quilts that I I need to figure out how to um like that have been given to me that I need to figure out how to mend. Um, also, my husband's grandmother was a huge quilter and we have I've inherited many of her quilts. So I've been sort of always surrounded by quilts and um, I've always been drawn to them. Um, but, and, and so I've had quilters in my life, but it really wasn't my mom that, that uh, taught me to quilt. Um, but I think that I would have converted her into a quilter for sure. <laughs> If she were still alive, we would definitely be quilting together, together, and that would be a lot of fun. So, so those are the last two questions. I apologize if that was uh, too much navel gazing for you. <laughs> Sometimes it feels a little weird to be so self indulgent. But that is it for today. There are no new reviews. Wah, wah. But I would ask that if you enjoy this podcast, I would appreciate it if you would leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, wherever you listen. I appreciate you guys so much, and I hope that you are enjoying this sort of change of season we're having, and I hope that you're getting a lot done. And please share all about it in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group or reach out to me in any of the places. Have a wonderful week. 
You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, on Instagram as Kristen Esser. And once again, please consider joining the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going. <laughs>